Hey everybody, just doing a quick update um, on my pre hair 2000 Sons. I <coughs> finished uh, Combat Squad up. Uh, got 16 more to go and 4 vehicles to do in essentially 7 days. But more in reality, over this weekend. So, uh, this coming Saturday is just going to be all about the vehicles. And hopefully I'll get them done with time to spare to start on the bases for the uh, 16 other uh, Space Marines. And then Sunday, I'm going to have to really cook through and do 16 Space Marines. Uh, if anybody has any tips, aside from spray, spray basing, on how to uh, assemble a line faster, I'd love to hear them. <clears throat> um, well, yeah, I think I am getting faster at doing these guys, so I should have no problem. The way I normally do them is I put the chest and legs together with like a grenade pack on them or whatnot. I do that as one thing. I do the backpack and heads. Well, the heads separate on these guys because of their um, nature being Warhammer heads. I feel like I need to paint them separately before I put them on. I do the backpack separate. And then I do the uh, put the shoulder pads on the arms. And I do the arms before and then I attach everything together onto the main body. I do the bases before putting anything else on them as well. Um, so what we have here is your standard tactical marine with bolter. Let's see if I can get them close. Oh, out of focus. There we go. Um, quick overview. Uh, overview. Um, those are actually four real red scorpion upgrade chest pieces. Um, although any piece, any chest will work, as long as it doesn't have any, uh, the Akia or Aquila on it. Unless you're doing it for children, then you can use whatever chest pieces you want, really. Um, the heads I used are War, uh, Warriors of Chaos Regiment Warrior Box for Warhammer Fantasy. And I cut the horns off. I'll do a little vid on that, maybe when I make them on Sunday or Saturday, wh whichever. <clears throat> And then the little plumage for all of them were from High Elves. Oop, lost focus again. Anyway, they're um, from High Elf Archers and Warriors box. The, the big plumage that you see right there is from the, I believe, the Warriors box. And the other ones are from the Archer box, a little crescent, and then also Singular Feathers, which I don't have an example of here, oddly enough. But, um, yeah. That's them. Uh, how I paint these guys is a base coat in black, and then I just use mechrite red with a wash of ball red over it, and that's it for the red. And then what I do for the gold pieces is uh, dwarf and bronze because they stop making brazen brass, followed by shining gold, and that's it. Uh, bulk of metal for the ribbing on the armor and the everything else the guns that leave black and the symbol of course is white and then tactical uh... this is uh... the old Games Workshop site had some pre-heresy articles on there I believe Games Workshop Australia, Australia there we go still does so they did something similar also the um... the old saber tooth or whatever they called the card game for uh, the, the Great Crusade, I don't play it, but I have the art books from it, and they have some Thousand Suns examples in there. A note on these guys, you can, they're different. Let's see if I can get the focus again. Oopsie daisy. There we go. I gave him a studded shoulder pad and the Legio symbol on, on the right, along with some crazy plumage. I did, I did that first as a test for the plumage. I kind of like it. It's crazy without taking away from the model. In my opinion, and it's not like the uh, HQ ones that I used, which are blatantly different. Um, the reason why I did the shoulder pads like I did, though, is because I'm going to run them as tactical marines. But in the future, um, I have to... Well, okay, to give you a little background. 1750 lifts i got to get done by a tournament next Sunday. I know I only have this weekend to paint it, really, because there's a convention going on called Icon, if anybody lives on Long Island that I'll be going to next weekend, which is tournaments at, so I won't have time to paint during that weekend. 
so I can get it done this weekend, which is why I'm doing 16 Marines and 4 vehicles. But, uh, anyway, so for that list, there's tactical Marines, but in the future, as I slowly add to this army, um, while painting other stuff up at the same time, I will try and make up more of these guys with the studded shoulder pads and maybe different plumage, and run them as stern guard because I believe their special ammunition fits in really well with a thousand suns. I can just either I can explain away a special ammunition or some crazy psychic powers for the legion, considering they're legionists, uh, big into the whole psychic power stuff and sorceress powers. I was also thinking if I run this this guy, those guys with some other, let's put this guy with the squad, with some other um conversion work, maybe some tabbers and whatnot, and scroll work, I can run the plumage guys as a count as Legion of the Damn Squad. And the whole reason I say that is because the rules behind the Legion of the Damn Squad fit closely with the Chaos Thousand Suns rulebook of Thousand Suns Marines and that they're slow and purposeful with a really with a really good save. One better actually a three plus invuln. In case anybody didn't know that. Plus the slow and purposeful rule with heavy weapon and a special weapon. So what I was going to do was pretty much make up a really ornate looking marines, like essentially mini sorcerers, following this style here, and run and possibly have a count as Stern Guard or a count as Legion of the Damned, depending on how I want to run it for the army to f fill it out more in case because um currently running running um an allied Grey Knight Terminator squad. Or well, counts as anyway, I should say. It's painted up as a thousand suns. And um there are a lot of points. So if I take them out I can have room for like a ten man squad of Stern Guard, even Legion of the Damned. And the ability for them to tell up the Legion of Damned and V strike in, because they have to do that pretty much fits with like a sorcerer teleporting them in with like a arcane ritual onto the battlefield to defend their brethren. <clears throat> but that's enough of my fluff ramblings. I also want to say a quick thank you. Uh, I haven't been posting videos that long, maybe a week, if that much. And um, I got two subscribers. I got uh, Mr. Rubric, I think, and this is my second one. And the first one was Grim Sweaty Blazer. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to you, you two. Um, if anybody hasn't checked out Grim Sweaty Blazer, he's got good stuff on Tyranid, good Tyranid Tactica, and uh, his Ice Boar, which is cool. I've been following him for a bit now. Um, He's also got a blog, I think High Fleet Erebus is what it's called, in case you want to check that out. So just a quick, I guess, shout out, if you will. He was my first, so thanks for that. Um, and yeah, hopefully more to come and whatnot. But uh, Mr. Rubik, I think, is just a guy who subscribes to videos that he, uh, or channels that he likes to watch videos from, which is cool. I've done that in another, uh, before I started posting videos. So yeah, um, thanks again. Uh, I know it's only two for some of you, some of you have like hundreds or whatnot, but uh, I think that's pretty nice. Nice of them to take the time out to uh, subscribe. Um, so yeah, more videos to come. Just wanted to show you the uh, five-man uh, combat squad. Um, which currently I can't add any special weapons to until they're fully ten-man, but I still can take a power weapon, which I have on my, on my sergeants. If I... um. If I have time over the weekend or and slash finish the army, I'll group them together and do a little video on them and why I chose what I chose. Uh, until then, another video is to come possibly. Uh, take it easy.